The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the seventh chapter, not the 20th chapter. On the last day of the Festival of Booths, the great day, while Jesus was standing in the temple, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive, for as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Rick Kirchhoff of the Germantown United Methodist Church said these words as his opening remarks at the Memphis Annual Conference. He said, It is a time to open up to the mind-blowing, heartwarming, life-changing power of God. The power of God can invade the body, inflate the mind, swell the soul, lift the spirit and make us more than we ever imagined. It'll make you young when you're old, and it'll make you live even when you die. The power and presence of the spirit will disturb, delight, deliver, and lift. When God sends forth the spirit, the whole face of the earth is renewed. When God sends forth the spirit, chaos is changed into creation. The Red Sea opens up to a highway of freedom. When God sends forth the spirit, a young woman says, yes, Jesus is born and life is never the same. When God sends forth the spirit, amazing things happen. Barriers are broken, communities are formed, opposites are reconciled, unity is established, addiction is broken, cities are renewed, hope is established, people are blessed, and church happens. Today the Spirit of God is present, and Christ the Savior of all the world is lifted up." End quote. Can you feel the excitement in the air? Today is a festival. Today a birth is celebrating, the birth of the church. Today the power of God comes to our spirit. Today we rejoice that God's Holy Spirit has come to earth. Today, we celebrate Pentecost. It is one of the major festivals of the church year and is actually on the same level as Easter and Christmas. But there are no Christmas trees, no Easter lilies on the altar, no presents, no family gathering, and no rushing around to parties and malls. Although we do have a few extra special decorations for this day today. For many, Pentecost just feels like any other day, any other Sunday. Maybe it's because we have a difficult time getting a handle on the Spirit of God. Maybe we don't really understand what exactly happened on this day 2,000 plus years ago. And maybe talk about the Spirit is not quite as sweet as talking about a little baby born in a manger, or angels singing in the heavens, or gifts being brought from foreign dignitaries, or shepherds tending their sheep on quiet hillsides. Maybe Pentecost doesn't get so much attention because we have not found a way to commercialize it. 
We don't turn Pentecost into an extravaganza or a national holiday. So it kind of goes unnoticed. But it is not just any ordinary day. It's not even like any ordinary Sunday. Today is the day that we remember that the Spirit, that Spirit that Jesus promised his disciples, right, that Spirit came to earth. And even more, the Spirit did not just come to earth, but also to our hearts and to our souls. On the day of Pentecost, about 2,000 years ago, it had been 10 days since Jesus had ascended to heaven. And the disciples, they were waiting in that upper room. And I mentioned last week that in his last meeting with the disciples before his ascension, Jesus told them they had to do something that is very difficult for many humans. Jesus told them they had to wait. So they did. They were still waiting. They were still praying. Some probably wanted to leave. Others were going to wait and see what would happen. Some might have doubted that anything was going to happen at all. While others did remember Jesus' appearances and had the faith to wait in hope. Then, out of the blue, with no announcement, no fanfare, no warning. The Holy Spirit enters that upper room. What Jesus had promised was actually really happening. The breath of God, the Holy Spirit, the wind entered that room. And then what did that spirit do? Did it hang around the ceiling and blow around the room a little bit? Did it sit in the chair, at the tables? No. That spirit of Jesus comes in and it collides with the disciples' souls. The Holy Spirit joined with their souls and it joins with our souls, mingling with our own unique selves and gifts. The festival that we celebrate today is the fact and the belief that God's Spirit has come to each one of us and lives within each one of us. It is the Holy Spirit which comes into all of creation and brings the promise of salvation, the promise of forgiveness, the promise of reconciliation with our Creator God. As I said a minute ago, this is no ordinary Sunday. This is the Sunday when we celebrate the changes that can be made in each of us through the power of the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit, which is the same presence that was moving over the face of the earth when God created the world in which we live. That same present presence that took the form of a baby born in a manger in Bethlehem. It is the same Spirit of God that walked on this earth for 33 years, teaching, healing, proclaiming the love of God for all people. And now, today, it is that same spirit that is within us all. It is God's spirit alive and well on this earth, working through ordinary humans, working through the church to bring amazing love into the brokenness of this world. Our text from Acts tells us that once the Spirit descended on the disciples, right, the flames came. They went outside. They left that, the safety of the upper room and they began speaking in languages that everyone could understand. Peter preached his own sermon. People from all different lands could hear the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The spirit within the disciples enabled them to preach, and the spirit without enabled those to hear his words of good news, 
the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, Peter preached, and this is the last sentence in that reading this morning, that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We call upon the name of the Lord each Sunday. Through word and through sacraments, we receive the spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, to mingle with our spirit today and each day. And it is that spirit which mingles with us and who allows us to say, as Peter said, Abba, Father. It is that spirit that mingles with our spirit and gives us comfort in times of sorrow, gives us courage in times of suffering. It is that spirit that mingles with our spirit and gives us hope as we face all the brokenness of this world. So be ready. Get ready. God is up to something. As I said earlier, when God sends forth the Spirit, amazing things happen. Barriers are broken. Communities are formed. Opposites are reconciled. Unity is established. Addiction is broken. Cities are renewed, people are blessed, and church happens. Today, the Spirit of God is present. Hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs>